but Carrasco uh, could be just as good. He's 1B, especially with the talent and the way he commands the baseball. He goes out of the stretch, so he keeps it simple and stays in the throwing lane. But to help with Kluber and that, that tough staff, they are very close and they talk a lot like the Houston Astros, so they know they understand that they're the weapon of that ball club. When he's healthy and you have Kluber, these one or two punches can beat anybody in baseball. They work efficiently, they don't waste pitches, and that's how they're able to go deep in ball games and help save that bullpen. I'm a huge fan of this guy, and he's a huge fan of this show. <laughs> yeah, and you, so, uh, as a teammate, you saw him pitching with an attitude, the rage, the kind of yeah, the turnover. Yeah, I think kind of that's the one thing I wanted to say is, you know, Cookie's one of those guys. That's his nickname. Mm -hmm. right? yeah, okay. You know, he's one of those guys that if you want to be successful in this game as a staff, you got to have three or four horses, and the Cleveland Indians have that. Yeah. You got Bauer, you got Kluber, you got Carrasco. Even Clevenger's having a tremendous year thus far. The thing about it is with him, and I really remember this in 2013 when I was in Cleveland, he was really struggling, man. Right. He was kind of an up and down guy. He was either in the bullpen or he was starting. I mean, couldn't really figure out what he wanted to do. And I remember once the season ended, I looked at him and I said, you need to bring something back. You need to have something that nobody else has. Next year, he came back, had a little, had a little hair on his chin, bro. <laughs> he feeling good about himself. And I think that's where the resurrection of Cookie Carrasco really took place. Yeah, a little attitude adjustment from Nick Swish. I, mean, I, I didn't I do love, anything he did. I'm I just love, saying. Taste him, taste him, taste him. Yeah. Taste and I, I love that Carrasco, does, he's very efficient, doesn't waste any pitches, and a guy who wants to finish things, and he certainly yep. did. As young as he is, he's off. Look where he rags. This is the best season he's having of any of them so far this year. I mean, he's the best player in baseball. He's just quietly under the radar, especially with Otani, especially with Pujols reaching 3,000. I bet you his locker for the first time is very lonely. And I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm sure he's relishing in this coming to the ballpark, getting his work in, and, and continue to get his job done. I tell you what, as a starting pitcher and a guy that likes to throw the ball down, I wouldn't know how to attack him. It, it's one of those things where you're taught as a pitcher, stay low, live low, live long. But he seems to be able to cover that baseball and drive it with authority. And you don't want to go up because he'll get on top of that too. So, again, I'm a big fan of him, big fan of his athleticism. He brings it. He can run, hit for power. He can do it all, man, and he's doing it under radar. He's going to be the MVP this year. Well, that's what I'm going to say. That would be his third. I, I, yeah. I, I'm going to say something. I'm, I, 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 don't Keep know, on. I don't know if the comparison is right, but this guy's had six full seasons in the big leagues. In the MVP voting, he's finished second, second, won it, finished second, finished first, won it again, and then finished fourth. Yeah. We are looking at our LeBron James of baseball. Hello. There's nothing on this on baseball field Hello. that this man can't do. Well, but he's got to he's got to win. Some, I know it's unfair. He's got to get to the World Series. Well, LeBron get and needs win some players some too. So, so then they went out and put so, some side so, dishes so, around him too. That's what I was. Uh, it's saying. good to have lobster well, mac around. Sometime. Well, I mean, they tried signing certain players that didn't pan out. Those right. again, former Texas Rangers that were washouts. I think they nailed it though. Jay Up restructured his contract. They got Cozart. I mean, they got gold sprinkled all around that. Uh, infield and outfield, <laughs> and Calhoun's the only one that's not really hitting right now. So this right. lineup is deep. I think they're able to settle down the, the, the starting pitch, and they can go far in the playoffs. Yeah, I, I mean, he's only 26 years old. I mean, uh, it seemed like Trout got more attention being a fan of the Eagles when they won the Super Bowl <laughs> than he has for his great career so far. So I know it's early, but we love doing this when it comes. And, Don Trump, I'll start with you. The Cy Young Award in the AL, only because we talked about Carrasco, you've got Kluber, you got Sale, and uh, certainly here's a guy with Justin Verlander, his teammate, two on the Astros that could be in that company. I mean, what better place for you as being a young starter evolving better than Houston, Texas right now? I mean, the way their staff is able to command their fastball and most importantly spin the breaking ball, he's gone away from his slider and gone to a board depth-changing breaking ball to change the eye level. So then it makes that straight fastball look even more lively. You know how it is, Switch. When yep. guys are able to change your eye level, it makes it for a more comfortable a bat, and he's able to throw that fastball on both sides of the plate. So I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed with what I've seen. Health is wealth over there. But if you have a guy like that with Justin Ver Verlander, he's going, going to do nothing but get better. Well, just piggybacking on the fastball, too. I mean, obviously, he's throwing his slider and his breaking ball a lot right. more this year than he has in the past. But hitters are hitting 103 against the fastball. And he said he was sluggish today. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's I the thing. Yeah. But the other happening. day, you were talking about Severino. I mean, being an ace of the eight. So this is and, and, and it's going to be a fun race. It's going to be a fun race. And, 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 the, and the one thing about these teams, they're on high-powered offenses. So they're going to accumulate a lot of victory. 
threes. It's all about the strikeouts and how long they can stay in the ball game. And again, Severino is going to get a lot of strikeouts and a lot of chances with that offense. You know, Chris Sale, you know how he does. Obviously. So yep. these, it's going to be a fun race. I think it's going to be a four-horse race for the rest of the season. And I had that three, but I think he's going to be there. How about an advantage for, for guys like Kluber and Carrasco or Cole and Verlander when you have another guy who could be just as good helping you for that Cy Young? Well, it, it does two things. One, it takes the pressure off you, but at the same time, if you see one guy dealing, the next day you want to get 10 strikeouts or 12 strikeouts. So it makes the game fun. You save the bullpen, and it makes your value go up. And I'll tell you what, guys compete off each other, and they feed off each other, especially in that, in, in that, in that rotation. I've been a part of something like that. Which guy would you rather not step in against? Yeah, that's... <laughs> I don't face any of them. None of them. None of them. I wouldn't want to butt off none of them, that's for sure. So You've had your share.